Hey everybody, Bob McCarthy here, and this is Northeast Comic Con 2024 Cabin Fever. Check it out. All right, folks, I'm joined right now by Diane Helen Kennedy. That's right. We took the bus. We took the plane. We got all the way here, and then we had a walk here from the bus stop. I said, Diane is going to have to be here. Please, please, Lord, let Diane be here. And the beautiful Diane is joining us today. Diane, we're so happy to have you here today. I'm so glad that your flight landed. Yes. Actually, there was no flight. I, I am local. I drove here this morning. Oh, okay. <laughs> Now I feel now I feel jaded. Like I feel like I've been. I thought you got on a plane. No, no, no. Someday, someday I'll get. So it. you're a Massachusetts resident. Yes, yes, I am a Massachusetts resident. That's one of the big things that we love coming to these cons and um, telling everybody that you don't have to be um, in L.A. or Houston or whatever to become a voice actor. You can do it from home. It's it's a wonderful it's a wonderful profession. Wow, that sounds incredible. Yeah, so I work out of my uh, in my pajamas out of my closet. <laughs> She's like, I work out of my pajamas. I'm like, all right, that's a cool. So tell us. What some of the work that people have been familiar with that they can know about your work that you've done? Okay, I'm um, in uh, Marvel Move. We've uh, Kevin and I, who I'm here with today, we've both worked with Marvel. Um, my time at Sandrock, ready or not, um, a lot of video games that uh, you'll hear my voice pop up on, like, on occasion. <laughs> oh, wow, that's incredible. You know, so uh, if anybody ever get a voicemail from you, or maybe they might hear that sexy voice, they'll know that, you know, from the TV show. Uh, we see uh, He Man and Family Guy, and that's this gentleman here, right? And He's over there. He's right over there. Come on in here. Let's get him in here. Let's get him in here. Hey, brother, another fellow Marvel uh, activist. Your name is? Uh, my name is Kevin Urban. Kevin Urban, that's right. Yes. Um, no relation to Dr. Marty Urban. Am I a good friend, right? No. Um, I'd be raking in a lot more money. If yeah, I you was. would be because the doctor, the doctor is a, a, a great guy. So uh, I want to tell some people your work here with Marvel and some of the stuff that you've done. Yeah. So um, as Diana just said, uh, we're both here at Northeast Comic Con. Um, we'll be delivering a panel at 12 o'clock, how to get started in voice acting. Um, I've dabbled as a sound alike uh, for He-Man and Family Guy. Uh, Moarm and Fire Emblem Heroes, um, Korg and Marvel Avengers Academy, XCOM. I've been in a lot of different, uh, a lot of different genres. It's the funnest job on the planet. A, a jack of all trades, right? And a master of all of them, right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, absolutely, There's folks. No one better for the job than me. All right. Uh, fav favorite Marvel movie. Uh, favorite Marvel movie is um, either Thor Ragnarok or uh, Endgame. You? Oh, definitely Endgame. Yeah, definitely. No, no, con no contest about it, right? No, no. The X Men '97 cartoon series yes. coming back on Disney, right? Is now is that the bombshell, right? They're more excited than me. I've been watching it. It's uh, it's just so it's already cool. out. Yeah, well, no, I've been watching the '97 series. Oh, okay. Yeah, like the original series from the from the '90s because I used to love it when it was first out, and now I'm watching it again. It's so it's so fun. It's a little camp, but it's so fun. <laughs> I mean, camp is the best stuff, though, right? I mean, come on, we have to have camp, right? Like Batman camp. and. It needs to be fun, and it looks like it's going to be fun, and it's they honor the original look with that nice, clean, digital HD. It's going to look good. That's I, awesome. I've got faith. I've right. got faith. Jennifer Hale's playing Jean Grey, and she's an instructor of mine, so. <laughs> yeah. Good to know. I honestly didn't know that. I didn't know that. All right, folks. Wow, it's incredible. We get an exclusive here with two great voiceover actors. That's right, Kevin Urban, Diane Kennedy, right here at Northeast Comic Con. That's how we do all right, folks, we're here at Northeast Comic Con 2024. I'm here with a living legend and icon, someone that we're so excited to meet, Jeremy Miller, right here, Ben Seaver of Growing Pains, right here at Boxborough. It's so great to have you here, Jeremy. I want to tell you, is this your first time in Massachusetts? Or Oh, no, I've been to Massachusetts many times. It's been about 20 years, though, so I'm glad to be back. I love it up here. It was so glad to have you here. Um, I, I, don't know, do, I don't know if you remember all the episodes and people come up to Pretty you. Much. and after. Okay, so there's one of mine that's one of my favorite episodes yeah, that I watch. It's called Ben and 
Mike's Excellent Adventure. One and it's, of my favorites. It is like a movie, literally, where you guys have to go get the glue, right, for your project with Russia, right? Yep. And then you guys meet Jenny Garth, yep. and then, like, you're like, hey, it's the glue boy. You know what I mean? We had so much fun shooting that one. It was all night shoots, and we were out in the back lot on Warner Brothers on the location where we were driving around and yeah, stuff. Yeah. So it was just Kirk and me and Jenny and the girls just having a ball all, like, three nights in a row just – it was such a fun shoot, and those were always our favorite to do, where we just kind of got to hang out and be kids, you know? Uh, wasn't it um, Officer Winslow was the cop? Yes. It, yeah, it was yes. Officer Winslow. So Absolutely. Great, so it was a lot of great different sitcom stars in that one episode. We it was did. like an adventure. Um, and I want to ask you, um, so... Um, the um that that episode there um no no I'm sorry my my second question I'm getting a little fuzzy here folks hey this would happen we haven't gone to a convention in a while you called the guy um stinky okay that's that's unheard of but what about how did you guys get along calling uh, Richard Stabone boner on that was it a different meaning in 1987 no it had pretty much the same meaning but I don't we actually are responsible for bringing that phrase to the forefront it wow. became a thing and more common after we named Richard Stabone Boner. Yeah. Our producers had a sick sense of humor and they loved trying to slip whatever they could in and somehow that made it past the censors. I have no idea. Because yeah. yeah. I mean they would have a fit about one little word and somehow we got away with that. Yeah. So it was it was not a common word you heard until our show made it, you know, okay, I guess. So yeah. and God bless Andrew who's no longer with us. Andrew was such a wonderful guy, very tortured in a lot of ways. Ways, yeah. And unfortunately, you know, he he w he went the way he did. But he was such an awesome guy, and we had. I mean, he was so talented and so funny. Yeah. You know, yes, absolutely. Wonderful. And the whole cast was. You had so many great characters. Like I said, we talk about so Stinky. Many. We talk about Julie. All these other ones. Um, I want to ask you about uh, Joanna Kearns and Alan Thick. Talk about the great parents there. Alan, what, what are your experience with them? That was my other parents. You know, I mean, I. Being as young as I was when we would finish the season and we'd be going on hiatus. I would sit in Joanna's lap and cry because I was going to miss my, my family, you know, because I was gone for the summer. Yeah. So, no, Alan and Joanna were always very maternal and paternal with us. I mean, yeah. they really were looking out for us always. Um, they were our role models and just two of the sweetest, most wonderful human beings in the world. Yeah. So. Well, well, so are you, Jeremy. I want to thank, thank you, you so much for your time. It's such an honor. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only, only Jeremy Miller. All right, folks, it's such an honor to have an incredible, iconic actress right here, the one and only Tracy Gold. Everybody knows her as Carol Seaver on Growing Pains. Tracy, it's so great to have you in Massachusetts. Is this your first time here? Have you been here before? I have been here before. I love Massachusetts. All right. I love that the East Coast. I'm from the East Coast. I was born in New York City. So. Oh, really? Oh, where yeah. were you born? Manhattan, Upper East Side. Oh, okay. All right, and then you moved to L.A. and then... Yeah, when I was like five turning six, we moved to L.A. for like... Hollywood. Yeah, absolutely. And then just everything blew up from there. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It You've done a lot of iconic television shows like Chips, Eight is Enough, um, yeah. Trapper John, MD. So many. Do you have vivid memories of, of that before you got into Growing Pains, those iconic television shows? Oh my God, yes. The funniest thing was the other, like a few days ago, like literally, my husband sent me a screenshot that I was on TV doing a Quincy at nine. And I'm like, like the birthday girl. And like, so there are so many. Like things I did back before Growing Pains, that that's the nostalgic stuff for me because I don't normally see that. And when I see little me, I'm like, ah, I, I, I get great joy out of it. And the, the sitcom is so iconic. What do you think about today's sitcoms? And do they, they have the same kind of like, not, not everything's gone in the 80s and 90s, right? We had such a great era, but now it's not the same. What do you think about today's sitcoms? Well, shows? you know what I think is that like back in the day, like the day, there was like three, four channels. It was three before Fox and, you know, and so everybody kind of was watching the same thing. Now there's so much content. There's so much out there. And I think there's like a little bit more of a cynical like vibe in the world at the moment. And so I don't think it's quite like this. I think like Growing Pains now, I think people would look at it with a more cynical eye and would just appreciate just the goodness of it. Absolutely, 100%. Folks, we want to get Growing Pains in syndication right here in Massachusetts. It's not in syndication, folks. The DVD has come out. This is uh, season two that uh, Tracy's showing here today. But all of the seasons actually just went to DVD, so now we can get it. Uh, you can go to Amazon.com. I know Walmart, Hard It. Watch a 
good advertiser. Thank you Thank so much. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, folks, because it is one of the greatest shows. And also, you guys had great messages in the shows that today's shows don't have. We always you know try I mean? to, yes. Really, we always. Because you could leave your kids with the television set and watch the Seavers, right? Absolutely. And the truth was that, like, you go through troubles by the end of the episode, it was resolved. Yes. And then all of us as individual characters each got a special moment episode where we were able to like address like like what was going on in the world and we all got that kind of special moment like Matthew Perry the Matthew episode, Perry yep. God, God bless, bless him yep. I know and so that to me is such an important episode and you know I remember I mean we had so many like poignant kind of like you know real moments of like what could go on and you were playing a straight age student i mean nobody was smarter than carol siever i remember when uh, I'm not smart remember, as carol remember you kept all your homework and all your and, and ben had to come in and he, he had a file cabinet right you of all you know your how hard it was to memorize those lines i had no <laughs> idea half the words i was saying i was like carol siever's way smarter than me what is um, one of the great memories that stand out of Growing Pains you want to tell your fans out here today? Well, I met my husband when I was doing yeah. Growing Pains, so that's probably the best. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you know. Absolutely. And Joanna, who yeah. played my mom, introduced us. Yep. So that's pretty cool. And Alan Thicke, who was a therapist that was also your father, so that must be, he always gave great advice because he was a therapist. He worked from home. Alan, 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 Alan. We love Alan. We miss Alan. We adore Alan. He was our patriarch he was our like solid foundation and we kind of without him it's 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 we we miss him so much thank you so much and i want to, my last question i want to ask you what advice do you have other actors that are looking to get into acting getting in the field whether they're child actors or adults what advice do you have for them i think you need to keep your wits about you i think you have to know that it's so tough out there and have a, a tough shield and don't let it get to you. And, um, you don't have a chip on your shoulder, right? Yeah. Not chip, but you need to have a tough veneer because, yeah. like, they're going to come at you. Yeah. But, you know, you, you have to love it. Yeah. You have to love it to do it because it's, it's a beast. Show me that smile again. Show me that smile. We can know the meaning on your trying. We're coming to the end. All right, there's yet to begin. Oh, long as we got each other. And we got the world sitting right in our hands, baby, you and me. We got to be the luckiest dreamers ever could see. I think that's some of it, folks. All right, that's how we're going to end it. It was the worst. All right, I'm even worse. Ladies and gentlemen, the iconic, the one and only Tracy Gold.